We peeled, washed, and uh, cubed up the sweet potatoes, ready to put in the jars, and that's what Amy's gonna be doing now. We, we received, uh, I don't know, a ton of sweet potatoes uh, from a friend, or from Amy's mom, actually, and uh, we didn't want them to go to waste, so. What she's doing now, the reason why they're in water is because we, we uh, we cut those up last night so to keep them good for overnight until we got a chance to do this we soaked them in water that bowl was full we're working on the last jar here that's just raw sweet potatoes she's packing them in tight and then we're going to add a teaspoon of, uh, half a teaspoon of salt Thank you, because I didn't know. <laughs> and top them with water. All right. So that again was pack the sweet potatoes as tight as you can in there. And then that's to help pack them tight. Just tap the bottom of the jar, help oh. pack them. And then you said, uh, how much salt? I'm doing half a teaspoon. Some people do a, t a full teaspoon. Now the salt isn't really necessary, is it? Mm -mm. So the salt is optional. You don't have to put salt in it. Fill the jars up to the neck with filtered water. And now with a little spritz of vinegar on a paper towel, wiping the rims. That's just to help make sure that we keep, we get a good seal at the end of the process. Quick little bonus hack for canners. This is a cool way to, to store your rings. It's just a, a piece of rope with uh, knots on either end. And that's how we store our rings. We're gonna put the rings on the jars and do those finger tight. That just means I take the jar and, and it's tight. The lid is tight enough to where you can spin it with your hand. Grab the jar. Quarter turn. When you're preparing your canner, you want to follow the specifications for the particular canner that you that you have. We have the Presto brand uh, canner, and we liked it so much, we got a second one. So we're going to be doing double barrel canning today. Now you've got a couple inches of water in there, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to load up the jars. Seven quarts can fit in there, correct? Yep. And uh, the reason why some of the <laughs> jars are uh, wide mouth and some are regular mouth is just because we're reusing jars. Canning jars are one of the few things left in our society that is not disposable. I try to reuse as many as I can. You always want to inspect your jars, your rings, your lids uh, for any kind of damage or defects before trying to can trying to pressure can, right? Right. And the jars were all sterilized and cleaned prior to filling. Oh yeah, we should probably mention that too. I add a little dab of vinegar to each canner, just because in case you have hard water, it really leaves a film on the jars, and uh, the vinegar kind of helps with that. And that big old bowl of potato peelings goes to the compost. When you're heating your canner, after a little while, you'll start to see some steam beginning to vent. As the pressure builds up inside the canner, this little thing that I can't remember what it's called starts to jiggle and eventually it'll pop up. Like that. This other canner is a newer model and that, uh, that little piece looks a little different, but it does the same thing. After it's been venting for a solid 10 minutes, it's time to put the weight on. 
We're going to do that on both. Now it's time to watch these gauges and make sure they come up to pressure. Uh, you're looking for a minimum of 10. 11 for our area. 11, okay. For our altitude. Um, yeah, you'll have the, to check that. The pressure is going to depend on, on your altitude. Once your gauge is up to pressure, see this one's just reaching 11 now. I'm going to adjust the heat under the pot to keep it between um, 11 or whatever your number is and about 15. Uh, Higher pressure is okay. If it goes below your your pressure limit, then you need to start your timer all over again. Right. We Get it back even, up to pressure. We haven't even talked about the timer yet. So. Once you're up to pressure like this, you're gonna process pints for 75 minutes, quarts for 90 minutes. In this case, we have quarts, so they need to stay up above that pressure for an hour and a half. Modern canners are just so full of um, safety features that uh, you don't have to be so scared of these anymore, not like the old days. This isn't gonna blow up in your face. When the timer's done, turn off the heat and let the pressure come all the way down on its own without touching anything. The pressure on this canner has come all the way down to zero and the little button is back down. That's how you know it's good to open. This one, the, the button is still up. You can see it's raised there. This one's not quite ready. We're going to give them a couple more minutes and then we'll be right back. The first step to opening the canner is to take the weight off. Now when you open the lid, remember there's still going to be quite a lot of steam in there and it's hot. So open the lid in such a way that the steam vents away from your face. And then remove the jars from the canner. We'll put them on a towel so that the heat uh, doesn't transfer into our countertop too bad because we don't have granite or concrete or whatever countertops. We've got just the old-fashioned laminated countertops and the, that intense heat in one, one uh, localized spot can really cause bubbles or damage to your countertops. So there's still a lot of heat in those jars so it's going to take some time for these to continue cooling out here on the countertop. After sitting here on the counter for 24 hours undisturbed, it'll be time to label the, oh, you heard that? That's the sound of a good seal. Uh, you'll know that you have a good seal when the button on the top of the lid gets sucked down like that one right there. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make that bouncy sound. So we're going to label these at the end of the 24 hours. We're going to store them in a cool, dark place.